I was 21 when I was moved into the position of being an engineer. And the first time I ever sat behind a board, pushed up a fader, was to uh, do a new version of Your Mother Should Know from Ma the Magical Mystery Tour. And I was petrified that time. My name is Jack Joseph Wig, and I'm here with Ken Scott to discuss the EMI red console that Waves has uh, modeled. For me, this is a very exciting day to be able to sit with you. You've worked with two sets of people that in, in particular um, I think is amazing. Yeah, I started off with the Beatles with, as an engineer of Magical Mystery Tour and the White Album, went on to do Procol Harum, Pink Floyd, uh, Let's See America, Elton John, David Bowie I did six albums with, two just as engineer and four as producer. Uh, Crime of the Century, Missing Persons, Mahavishnu Orchestra. When you think about the Red, the days of the Red, before TG, yep. what songs, or even artists, come to mind? I'm the Walrus, uh, recording a lot of it on that and mixing it. I say a lot because Jeff Emmerich started it and I, I continue. Then uh, the Truth Album with, with Jeff Beck, Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood. Uh, that was great. Uh, what else? Pink Floyd. I did uh, Paint Box and Apples and Oranges, which happened to be the last sessions that Sid ever played with the band on. And then I started also on the Red, the next album, which was the beginning of Gilmore being with them. Uh, Lord Sitar. Who can forget sitting behind the board to record Lord Sitar? The Beatles went through phases. There was one time when we were doing the White Album for probably about four songs, I guess it was, where they just walk in, we're starting to do a mix, setting it up, and they walk in and they say, okay, we want full bass and treble on every track. And that's what we had to do. We just turned full bass and full treble. And the mixes still sound great, which to me shows how, A, how musical that EQ is, was, but it's not the kind of EQ you can take a terrible sound and EQ the hell out of it to make it sound good. Right. It has to be good to start with, and then this just enhances it. The first thing I tried when I got the, uh, the plug-in to try it was just, I took a couple of tracks and I just turned the EQ full up, and they still sounded wonderful. Yeah, they sounded different, but it didn't completely mess them up, which so many EQs today, if you turn something full up, it's gonna wreck it. Right. But it, it was great. and as once I heard the way it was doing that, I knew these guys did a good job. This is getting close to the original. It, it's as musical as it was back then. The equipment with technology, is, it's always changing. There, there are things that I'd like to keep, like the warmth of, of a tube desk, a tube amp, much like the, the, the red desks. And one has to try and keep that warmth within any sort of modern technology, such as plugins. The famous guitar sound that people talk about, Revolution. Yes. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, how that happened? I didn't actually do it, Jeff Emmerich did. Uh, okay. But uh, I happened to walk in in the middle of the, the session, which was, at the time, the strangest thing I'd ever seen. I walked into the control room and there's the, the three Beatles around the, the red desk with their guitars playing, and there's Ringo's the only one in the studio. And what, what they were doing, they just took all of the guitars direct, and to get that particular guitar sound that you're talking about, Jeff just uh, overloaded uh, one of the mic amps on the, on the red desk, and I believe he used two Altec compressors to, to really squash it down, and it gave the sound. And, Another one of my tests for, for the red plug-in was feed in uh, a guitar direct, screw it up, and it, just hearing it straight off, it's, oh, revolution. 